I think it's time for a little coffee talk. Let's get this party started. For those of you who don't know what coffee talk is, it literally is what it says it is. I drink coffee, and I talk. Talk about random nursing stuff. Big surprise. Whatever comes across my lap, whatever I see on the internet, or what feedback I get. This particular uh, topic is the result of some feedback I got from a fellow nurse on Snapchat. So this is for Sarah, who asked a question. Sarah wanted to know how how do we get over how do we not get attached to our patients? How how do we not get sad? How do we not get angry when something negative is happening to our patients? Or when you become close with a patient and they die, how do you handle that? So Sarah's question kind of touches on the topic of transference. We all learned in nursing school, nursing school 101, transference has to do with the transfer of emotions. We could, we could get into transference and countertransference and, oh... You could just fill your head. At its core, it has to do with the emotional challenges or entanglement. Maintaining that pro- those professional boundaries. That's in a nutshell. Now, back in the day when I was in nursing school, we were taught transference was bad. You should not... Transfer your feelings or show emotion to your patients. You'll have this tendency of uh, care biasness. And you'll start treating them like a friend instead of your patient. At risk of, uh, you know, giving them preferential treatment in some way. And and transference actually could cause you to miss critical pieces of information. Basically, they used to tell you that transference could ultimately cause you to make a mistake that could harm your patient. And you don't want to confuse your patient so that they understand that there are boundaries between you and your patient. Between nurse and patient. This is a double-edged sword. It really is a double-edged sword. On on the one hand, sure, I absolutely agree with um, not causing transference to harm your patient. And the, the transference that I'm referring to is something that's subliminal, that you don't realize you're doing. Prime example is uh, trusting your patient that they're doing something that they should or should not be doing. And instead of being the professional and double-checking their work, you take it on faith that they're doing what they're doing. You, you, instead of you checking on them like every nurse and professional would... You assume the best in them, and you allow them some latitude in regards to their care. Or you start to feel bad for them, so you don't um, enforce care interventions. Although feeling bad for them really is a horrible description, because you know none of us want to cause harm to our patients. Loose example is, you know... Having them do pulmonary toileting after surgery. You give them the incentive spirometer and their flutter valve and you leave it in the room and you trust that they'll do it. You trust them because you like them, because you've befriended them, because, you know, they they wouldn't not do it. And then they don't do it because it hurts and one thing leads to another, mucus plug and intubation. 
Okay, I know, I know. Extreme case, sorry. I live in the ICU. But it brings up such an amazing, difficult decision for nurses. How much is too much? When do you care enough but not too much? Care we provide is, is managed by two separate entities. Our, our scientific brain, we know what is right and wrong, we know what needs to be done, we know the pathophysiology behind it, we know the why behind what we do, but we also lead with our proverbial heart because we give a shit about them. Some of the best nurses I know care, truly and genuinely care about their patients. Isn't it, wasn't it, uh, there's a, there's a famous quote out there. Almost everybody will, will forget what you do for them, but they will never forget how you make them feel. And it's that second part. How you make your patients feel is done with your proverbial heart. And we wear our emotions on our sleeve. We always have, we always will. That's what separates us from many others. Now, before anybody gets their panties up in a bunch, I'm not saying that other professions and other uh, services don't care. Not even gonna, not even, not even going down that road. There is a reason why we are the most trusted profession in the in the nation. People trust us for a reason. That trust comes at a an emotional cost. So at the end of the day, I truly, I, I, I think avoiding transference is a bunch of BS. I know I do. I trans, I, I'm a victim. I'm a, I'm, I'm an advocate of it. I practice transference all the time with my patients and their families and their friends. I deal in life and death every day when I go to work. Every day. There's an emotional component to my job, whether I like it or not. We're not even going to go down the, the path of the emotional bank that I've talked about on a gazillion occasions. Circling back to Sarah's original question. How do you avoid or how, how do you deal with uh, the loss of a patient? How do you not get attached? It's a great question, and I don't know because I get attached. I get emotional. I've cried with my patients and their families. Still do. It takes a lot of effort to hold back the tears. Many a days. And, I, and I'm okay with that. I'm absolutely okay with that. You know, they're... they're th they they obviously look to you as the professional for strength, um, for support, and you can't be a blubbering idiot. And it's taken a long time for me not to be the blubbering idiot. If you have to take a moment, you take a moment. That's what you got to do. But I don't have an answer to Sarah's question. I can only say that it does get easier. And I, I don't think I'll ever have an answer to that question. I'm going to continue to care. I'm going to continue to wear my emotions on my sleeve. I'm going to continue to cry. I'm going to continue to not give a damn of caring too much. I also have developed a sense of when things are going too far, or stepping over the line. And that's probably the, the, the take-home message is to, to, to understand where that line is. No, you shouldn't be visiting your patients, family, and friends outside of work, and you shouldn't be communicating with them in a, in a friendly manner. Friendly manner as in anything outside of your professional role. You deal with the, the, the loss and the struggle however you can to get through your day. You talk to other, other colleagues and friends and family members. Making sure not, not to violate HIPAA in any way. 
definitely want to practice the debrief. And if you don't know what the debrief is, and you, you, you should look it up. Actually having a debriefing amongst your medical team that took care of your patient. And it doesn't matter how acute or chronic that incident was to have some sort of debriefing, decompression. To uh, put your feelings out there, air your concerns, and to basically get it off your chest and off your mind. I hope Sarah will continue to care as much as she cares about her patients because those are the kind of nurses I want in my profession. Those are the kind of nurses I want to work with and know. What about you? Send me a message. Let me know. How do you feel about transference and dealing with caring too much? Not only how you feel about it, but how do you handle it? What do you do? Pretty sure all nurses could benefit from your tips. Another round of Coffee Talk comes to a close. Thank you for joining